The Lord. I don't know about you, but I am thankful to be in the house of the Lord. It is uh, something that just feels good, just feels right, and it just feels at home. So thank you, Brother McDonald, for, uh, for giving us the opportunity to have a ministry moment, and for me to uh, have the first slot is uh, very humbled, so thank you. I also want to start by just echoing what uh, Brother McDonald preached, I believe, last week, and that is that we are the family of God. You are my brothers and my sisters. We are the family of God. How can we say that without a smile on our face? We're the family of God. And I am thankful to be a part of a family that is going to a place outside of this world. We're going to a place that is not going to have any pain. It's not going to have any fear. It's not going to have any sorrow. We're going to heaven, folks. We're going to heaven. Is anybody thankful in this place that heaven is on our to-do list. It's on our future list. I'm thankful. And as I was uh, preparing for this first ministry moment, I was asking God, Lord, what is it that one brother could say to his brothers and sisters? What is it that you would like to share? And two passages of Scripture came to mind. The first one is in Genesis chapter 41. <clears throat> These three verses say, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon and he shaved and changed his clothing and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I've had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it, but I have heard it said of you that you can understand a dream and interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not me. It is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. The second passage of Scripture is actually in Numbers. In Numbers chapter 13, verses, starting with verse 27, it says, And they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. This is talking about the children of Israel after they went through the, the 40 years of being lost. They come right to the edge of the promised land. They send in the scouts, and the scouts come back, and everybody's on the edge of their seat. It's almost like an election. They just don't know. And they're on the edge of their seat. And they say, well, well, what did you find in the land? And what did they say? They told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. And the Amalekites dwelt in the land of the south. The Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Well, folks, let, let's get up. Let's go at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with Caleb said, We are not able to go up against these people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, The land through which, through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, Anak, and we were like grasshoppers in their own sight, and we were in their sight. These two passages of Scripture came to mind, and both of these passages have some commonality. Both Joseph and the Israelites were both people that believed on God. They had faith. I honestly believe that all of the Israelites, as they wandered through the desert, had a faith in God. Why else would you go out into the desert and pick up manna and eat it? They had a faith in God. They believed on him. And their faith is what got them to a place of opportunity. See, both of these passages of Scripture have a large component of opportunity in it. Joseph was given a dream very early on in his life, and he just had to tuck it away. He said, at some point, God's going to give me an opportunity. And I know it's going to come, and I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. And I'm sure if Joseph was here today, he would be very quick to tell us it didn't look at all 
like what he thought. And even the Israelites, when they were going through the desert, knowing that an opportunity was going to come to possess the promised land, they didn't think it was going to involve the Amalekites and the sons of Anak and all of these people that were intimidating. Now these two passages came to mind as I was preparing for this ministry moment, and I couldn't help in prayer looking at our world today. Yes, the election happened this week. Yes, there's a virus that's going around the whole world. And I felt like God was trying to help me understand, and I want to share it with you, that God is giving us an opportunity. It may not look exactly like what we want it to look like. It may not have been what we would have wrote down in our journals a year ago. But nonetheless, it's an opportunity. And I know for a fact that us here in this sanctuary and watching online, we are believers in Jesus Christ. We know that he is a healer. We know that he is a deliverer. We know that he is the one that sits upon the throne. And there is none beside him. No, not one. But he is the one that is in control. And even though we believe, and even though we look at this world of opportunity, we may have a little bit of fear. And so here today, my moment that I would like to share with you is don't be fearful. Don't be like the Israelites and listening for bad reports. Because it's very easy for each and every one of us to look out of these windows and say, I hear a bad report. I see things not the way I like them. People look a little bit bigger than I thought. Those are giants. It's very easy for us to become fearful. But I want to encourage you today that we are on the victorious side. We are believers in Jesus Christ. And we have an opportunity right at our hands to be Jesus Christ in this world. We have the opportunity to be his hands and to be his feet. We sang just a little bit ago, about being not afraid. And what was the opening passage this morning? Let's hear a good report in Philippians 4. Let's listen to good reports. As we get ready to sing again, let's get ready to listen to good reports. Let's get ready to share good reports. Let's not be afraid because we are on the victorious side. And last thing I'll say is when you hear something that sounds negative, when you go through this week, and you hear something that doesn't quite seem like you would have thought it was supposed to go. Just take a moment and think of Joseph and say, Lord, this is not what I thought. But I believe this is an opportunity for you to do something bigger and greater and stronger than I could have imagined. Because I'm not going to listen to these bad reports. I'm listening for the report of the Lord.
let's thank him today. He is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God has given us an opportunity. As dark as the world is, the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ is shining. Amen. Brother Steve Cervello is not able to be here today. He's sick, but he has a testimony of, of Tom, who we've been praying for with stage four cancer. God has worked a miracle in his life, and I was going to have him testify of that. I'll wait till next week and have him tell you. But he also posted that on Facebook, and he texted me this morning and said, a lady saw that on Facebook and said, I want to know more about your God. I want God to do something in my life. Amen. She also has cancer, and she's also reaching out. God's giving us opportunities, folks. Hallelujah. Our God is great and greatly to be praised. And then just before we came, I came into the sanctuary called me and he's at work and and he's crying and he said brother mcdonald i i gotta tell you he said I, I i was walking down the aisle and i saw a couple of spanish men that were off to the side and one was very distraught and i felt impressed about from the lord to go talk to him and found out he's having a rough day a very very difficult time and he was thinking suicidal thoughts and i began to tell him about jesus and i began to witness to him and he broke down and just cried and he said his name is Edwin, and he's going to call me. He's got the number to the church. He wants to know more about Jesus. Folks, I'm here to tell you, God's given us opportunities. Hallelujah. Oh, let's praise him right now. Let's thank him right now. Hallelujah. Oh, you are great and greatly to be praised, and we love you right now. How great is our God. Hallelujah. God. 